Hi friends. Now let us discuss design of crankshaft. Design of crankshaft. If you see the types of crankshaft, we have two types. One is center crankshaft. Another is side. Crankshaft. The major difference between these two are the center crankshaft will have two webs. These are webs. The side crank will have only one web. Only one web, right? Today we will see the center crankshaft. In this crankshaft, based upon the load acting on that, it is subjected to bending moment and twisting moment. If you see the crankshaft in this position, this position is called the top dead center position. In this position, the crankshaft is only subjected to bending moment. In some other angle, it will have a maximum twisting moment. So, we can design based on that twisting moment as well. In this discussion, we will, less, uh, we will first look at the bending moment acting on the crankshaft when the crank position is top dead center. In this position only bending moment is acting on the crankshaft that means there is no twisting moment. If you see the arrangement we have three bearings one, two, three and the major components of the crankshaft is the web, the crank pin, and flywheel shaft. So the assumption here is the weight of the flywheel setup is acting vertically downward and the associated pulley on which the belt is connected through which the power is transmitted it is assumed to act horizontal it is like this outward of the board first let us look at the crankshaft the crankshaft is supplied with a load which is coming out from the connecting rod or which is coming from the piston. So here the force we can call that as F P F P because the force coming out from the piston then this Fp is nothing but the pressure and the area of the piston. So this is the force that is acting vertical downward. Now as such when we look at the problem it is very complex because there are three supports. All three supports if you are analyzing it simultaneously it will be tedious so what we do we split this problem into two that means if we take these two bearings assume that it is simply supported here so this setup is considered to be a simply supported beam
then there will be reactions we can call this reactions and if we split this problem it could be divided into two because the weight of the flywheel is acting downward and the belt pull is acting outward so it is acting on the horizontal plane and it is acting on the vertical plane so vertical plane and the horizontal plane So the pull, the tensions in the belt P1 plus P2, tight side plus slack side. These are the reactions. Now the first step is to find all the reactions. And when you look at the arrangement, the pin here is subjected to bending because of which it may fail. So here we have to find the length as well as the diameter. Let us call this as diameter C, crank pin and the length. If we design these two based on the forces acting then and we have to check whether it is able to withstand. This is one part. Second, the web, both are identical, so we can uh, design any one. So it is also subjected to bending because of this reaction and this force, it is subjected to some bending. So we are going to look at that. And here again, due to these two forces, it is also subjected to bending moment. So because of which there is bending stress. Here we have to design the diameter of the which is which we call as DS. So the shaft, flywheel shaft. Okay, with this we have to design the three major components. Now first step is to find all the reactions. It is pretty simple. So um, the length as such we know it is B and this is B1, this is B2. Okay. So R1 P plus R2 V equal to Fp. So if we take moment R2 V into B minus Fp B1 equal to 0. So R2 V equal to Fp B1 by B. So if we substitute that here and we will find R1 V Fp B2 by B. And from the books we can find the ratio to find B is 2D. This is nothing but the diameter of the piston. And this B1 equal to B2. Okay. And if we come here again the same way it is C1 C2 C so R2 equal to W C2 
by C2 by C R3 dash equal to W C1 by C1. The same way here R2 dash because the distance is the same. Here also it is C1, C2 and this distance is C. Okay. So R2 H P1 plus P2 the C2 by C R3 H P1 plus P2 C1 by C. This is the first step. If you take this pin so the DC and LC so it is subjected to it is subjected to bending moment so the maximum since it is assembly supported beam the maximum bending moment will be at the mid plane here it will it is at the center so bending moment of the pin this R2 vertical can either come this way or that way not a problem R2 V into B2 right yes then we know sigma b equal to mb y by i i is nothing but pi by 64 dc power 4 y is dc by 2 so if you substitute that you get mb dc by 2, dc by 2, so 32 by pi dc cube, right, so this is the material bending uh, limit stress or allowable bending stress of the material, given material. Now it is this crank pin will have a bush around it and there will be connecting rod that is pressing it. So this pin has to bear that. So the bearing consideration we have to take that means the pin has to withstand that pressure. Okay. So uh, The force Fp is nothing but the bearing pressure of the bush okay, into the area. Area is the projected area. Uh, this is the projected area. So, nothing but DC into LC. Generally, the the allowable pressure for the particular material usually is 10 megapascal and this is also or 75 megapascal the generally the book gives this value because of the material okay if it is not given we can assume this values if it is given we have to use that it is also assumed LC by DC equal to 1. This assumption can also be made. So using which once you find out DC from this expression and then LC 
and substituting here and check for the pressure the induced one should be lesser than this value then the design is safe now let us design this web for web design Uh, the ratio or the relation is given for the thickness this is the thickness and if you see the side so this is thickness and this is width it is given as point 0.7 the diameter of the pin width is given as 1.14 dc straight away we can use this relation to find out the web dimension but basically we have to uh, also check what is the stress induced in this so it is subjected to bending and the force acting here either you can come from this side or this side is an eccentric force due to which there is a bending and also there is a direct compression stress okay because I mean uh, because of this force and it is bending like this okay so one side it will be when it is bending one side it will be tensile another side it is compressive and when we move this force here or the effect of this force on here it will also uh, induce a direct compressive stress so the compressive and the compressive gets added that is the stress induced which should be lesser than the allowable value okay so let us do that practice now so um, the distance or which plane we have to consider is the center plane so this is the distance the force and the perpendicular distance will give the bending moment okay so the bending moment will be r1 into see the distance this is LC this is B1 B1 minus LC by 2 minus T by 2 because this is the distance perpendicular distance ok so B1 minus LC by 2 minus T by 2 so this is the perpendicular distance ok so now the moment of inertia moment of inertia if you see about which plane it is bending if you take that view this is W and this is the center plane and this is the thickness T about this plane okay about this plane it is bending this plane is shown here about this plane it is bending so the moment of inertia about this axis is WTQ by 12 so the y this is the y distance this is the y distance this t by 2 sigma b mb y by i and if you substitute all this sigma b as 6 r 1 v into b 1 minus LC by 2 minus T by 2 by W T square. Direct stress is 
compressive sigma c which is nothing but this force r1 because this force when you shift here this is acting here right it will produce moment also moment is found out and this is the area cross sectional area we take the cross sectional area w into t now these two the the summation of this should be lesser than the allowable value so sigma c plus sigma d uh, sorry b should be less than the allowable finally we'll design this diameter ds it is subjected to it is very straightforward it is subjected to only bending moment which is acting at the mid but here there are two planes the belt tension is also acting and w is also acting so uh, so there will be two maximum bending moments at the mid plane uh, because of the horizontal and vertical forces respectively so first for the vertical force vertical bending moment will be so r3 dash vertical so r3 dash vertical into this distance c2 so done Okay. Now we have to take the resultant bending moment. So we call this vertical. We call this horizontal. M B vertical square plus M B horizontal square. Okay. So this should be. use this formula you will be able to get the dimension ds okay thank you